Hello and welcome back to our introduction part 2 on how to use OpenEMS Solver. In this part, I'll present how to construct the structure, initialize the meshing process, and finally, how to define the boundary condition for a general structure. By returning back to the overview OpenEMS web page, we can find after the FTD setup and the properties, there is a primitives. We can start first with how to define the box. Starting with how to define the box primitive. So the command in MATLAB will be csx, add box, csx, property name, and the number. This number represents what's called the priority if we have many primitives sharing this common area and there is a stop, start and stop points and the variable arguments. So start and stop points representing the start and the stop x and y and z coordinates if you are speaking about the rectangular. So if you have example like here, csx add box csx metal one so the property name metal one and the priority is one so it's lowest priority and there is two points in x and y z coordinates representing the starting and stop point for this structure as we can see here in the green rectangular box we can get one vertex and the opposite vertex on the other side will be representing the starting and the stop points if we can magnify this little bit so here is the starting point for example and the opposite vertex is the st stop point on the other hand we can see how to define a cylindrical box so which is a part of a cylinder with an inner and outer radii and we have an angle around the axle the axis of the cylinder and also height along this axis so we have here the coordinates representing the start and stop point r and phi and z and we are you if you are using the coordinate system we have to define it with one so the coordinate system is cylindrical so here we can see the radius inner and outer for this blue shape and the angle phi representing how how is the curvature around this axis and the height along this axis how long and the second part is this how to define the variable arguments so the variable arguments we have the property name the priority and we have some kind of transformation can be added so first with respect to the priorities with respect to the priorities it's very important in case if we have overlapping between some blocks so the basic idea here in OpenEMS if we if we have two blocks are overlapping the one with higher priority will be the one will be chosen to be simulated in OpenEMS. So like here in this graph, we have one, two, three, four different blocks are overlapping between H2 and among them four are the common. So we can see that one and two and three, they have common areas between one, two, two and three, three and one and four between all of them. So here, the area like the green area three covers two and cover one will be assigned only for three. For with respect to four, it only this area will be assigned to the material number four, not even one or two or three. So again, there is some exceptions. If we have non-physical properties like dumb boxes or probes boxes or even any kind of excitation this will not be affected by the description of priorities and also there is only one curve in one d which is the curve primitive is not affected as well so at each cs add some primitive function there is a number represents the priority if you want to you keep this priority highest as you much as you can you can define this with a highest value like 100 1000 with respect to the coordinate system, by default it's Cartesian, represented by zero number. 
and if we are using the cylindrical we have to define the cylindrical coordinates with coordinate system equal to one value the last one in the variable arguments is the transformation so we can make some transformation for each structure like scaling with some value s scale up or scale down and you can make a scale in different direction like x and y and z and you have also some rotation around origin with some vector and some angles or you have just like transfer moves the structure along x along y along z so here it's how to use this transformation to get a new structure with the basic structure you have built before back to our primitive so we have, have to define the sphere right now csx add a sphere csx property name so the name of the sphere and the priority number and the sphere is defined by two things the center and the radius and there is a variable argument as we have seen before so there is a sphere with priority 1 center 0 is the origin and radius 100 the same like the spherical shell so it will be add a spherical shell and the difference now we have center and radius like the sphere before and the shell width with the thickness of this sh spherical shell so you can see here we have the radius and the last number represents the thickness of this spherical shell the cylinder also can be defined as add cylinder and the same three arguments and and then the starting and stop points for the cylinder and the radius so the starting and stop points representing the x and y and z coordinates for the axis of this cylinder and the radius around this axis so here we can see the cylinder its uh, coordinates for the start and end and then the radius the same like the spherical shell we have a cylindrical shell so we have now start and stop point for the axis and the radius and the shell width like the same behavior of the spherical shell so it's the thickness of the cylindrical shell with respect now to the curve which is a 1d so it's just, just connecting between points so we have to define the priority this kind of points so the coordinates of each point in 3d x and y and z and how to define these points take care that we are writing that just like points this is the name of the points we will use and there is two numbers representing like the first number one and one and on the same column there is two and one so here this number representing the first coordinate is the, representing the x and y or z coordinates so one representing the x coordinates of the points two in the beginning of the argument is representing the y coordinates of the point three at the beginning is representing the z component of these points and the second number in the argument represents the number of this point so if we have a curve like here connecting between nine points so we have one two three in the first argument and we have from one to nine in the second argument and here how to define this kind of points and there is a shape of the curve done so last thing how to define a wire a wire is just a cylinder with radius zero so there is two way there is one way like here as you see right now and i would recommend if you would like to define a wire just use the same function of the cylinder and put the radius of this cylinder to equal to zero so you have only starting and stop points the otherwise you can use this function like the connecting between points in the space like the same behavior so this wire can be connected between any of two points with respect to the polygon which is a 2d area so now the function add polygon and we have now to define the points that connecting this polygon from the envelope so now we have priority and we have some kind of the normal direction and we have the elevation and we have the points 
So with respect to the normal direction, 0 represent x, 1 represent y, and 2 represent z. So it depends which plane you will define your polygon in. So now this one in x and y, so you can see this one now is the normal direction is 2, and the elevation represent the thickness of this one in the normal direction. So here it's 0, so it represents only a 2D dimension, not a 3D. And B represents the points in the XY plane. So take care that it's only two, two coordinates point, not three coordinates like the two examples before. And here the coordinate system is 0, is by default 0. So it's you don't need to write down this one in the variable arguments. And then you have defined a polygon in XY plane. The other two things like the polyhedron uh, or extruded polygon, it will be more something more specialized, so you can read it easily. So the second part now, how to define the boundary condition for the whole structure used in the simulation. So now we can find an FTD boundary condition. So we can go to this page. So FTD is a function. It's set boundary condition. FTD BC, this represents the boundary condition as a vector. And variable arguments. We have four main types in the boundary condition. Perfect electric conductor, perfect magnetic conductor, and a simple absorbing boundary condition, MUR and the perfectly matched layer absorbing boundary condition BML and representing there is a number at the end X which represents how many cells of this one. So like an example here, we have boundary condition equal six, six different numbers, six different values of this boundary condition which will be assigned to the coordinates like the same order the minimum value of x, the maximum value of x, and then the minimum value and maximum value of y, and at the end, the minimum and maximum value of z. So by the same order, we can define any boundary condition. So from the beginning, the perfect electric conductor, which will be the, the, default, the default boundary condition for the whole structure in open EMS, where all the tangential electric fields on this boundary will be set to be zero. And this boundary condition can be used to define the walls of a metal structure. The second, second boundary condition is the perfect magnetic conductor, with, where here all the mag tangential magnetic fields as on this boundary will be set to zero. And this almost, on the most of the cases, can be used like a symmetry boundary condition. The third and fourth one representing the absorbing boundary condition, the MU are representing the simple one, which has the advantage of fast simulation. The speed will be fast enough to get your simulation result in short time. The BML is more accurate in the result, but on the other hand, it will suffer from longer time for the simulation. So there is a trade-off and you can get the advantage you want if you prefer the accuracy or if you prefer to have your result in short time. By now we have defined the geometry of the structure and the boundary condition from outside. Now coming to the mesh, how to get this meshing for the structure. So here in OpenEMS it's using the rectilinear mesh using the E cells the famous one in FTD solvers. Some rules of thumb to make sure that you are taking care of these ones. It's the largest mesh cell should be less than one tenth of the smallest wavelengths, which is the value of this value coming from the highest frequency you are operating your structure in. So we have the maximum lambda should be less than lambda maximum over 15 or over 20. And the smallest wavelengths, as we said, defined from the greatest excited frequency and the material properties. Second one, 
make this mesh as coarse as possible to save time and as fine as needed to get some accurate result especially at the tiny spaces in your structure and for the third one keep an adequate distance to an absorbing boundary condition the PML or even the simple one MUR just keep at least quarter wavelengths to this boundary conditions and at the end to create a smooth smashing to give you more accurate result the neighboring cell sizes shouldn't exceed a factor of two so there is a factor can be defined in the mesh initialization function just keep this factor not more than two we can see through this example that we have to create a homogeneous mesh so with the resolution of the step 10 millimeter x and y 15 millimeter in z direction so it's a geometry function csx initiate csx and define mesh at x direction at the step 10 from 0 to 500 dimension of x dimension of y from 0 to 750 with a step to 10 there is another way to define the mesh and in z it will also from 0 to 2000 but here is a step is 15 at the end this is the main function define rectilinear grid csx and there is a number and there is the name of this mesh to get familiar with this kind of functions so in the matlab code you can just open each function and see all the arguments can be defining into this function and here we came to the end of this introduction and see you in the example parts and finally thank you